kids are finished early, uh -huh. right, or, or whatever. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of students do want to take on that challenge, going another step, but I find that some students, uh, they, they almost look at it like, well, why am I being punished by finishing early, and now you're asking me to do something more. Right. Um, so not everybody is game to take on, Right. you know, they don't look at it the same way that, that I would hope they I, would. I appreciate what you're saying. Let me respond, if I may, as follows. When, when you continue to build a culture that it's not about, excuse me, I'm very sorry. I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. Uh, I think I'm fine. Okay. Um, when you build a culture that it's not about everybody getting the same, but it's about everybody getting what they need, then it's a different conversation. Right? You would never expect, for example, for um, a, let's call it, middle of the road basketball player, maybe not even on the NBA level, to have the same type of workout regimen as, you know, an NBA all-star who's really trying to stay at the very top. You know, you're a certain place, you would think, well, it's not fair. I, I, why do I have to work equal to that person? But you want to be in a different place. So, again, the point is not to promote competition. The point is to promote maximizing your potential. That's really what it's all about. That's really what it's all about. It's actually a beautiful concept in Jewish tradition that I'll share with you briefly uh, with regard to the concept of testing. Like, Why is it, from, from a religious perspective, considering that God is involved in people's lives and testing and all of this, why do people have to endure tests if you believe that God knows everything? In other words, if you truly believe that the outcome is already known, why yeah. go through the testing process? Well, who was asking this question? I mean, I'm sorry? My son. Well, Nachmanides asked the question oh, with wait. regards to Abraham when he's bringing his son Isaac to the altar. Why, why does he bother to test Abraham if he knows what Abraham's going to do? The answer is because Abraham didn't know what he was going to do. Right? When you have a test, what you're doing is you're maximizing the potential of the individual who doesn't yet know that the potential lies within them to make that test a reality. So you're maximizing, you're, 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 you're concretizing, you're bringing to a real place. And we all have great potential that we've never tapped into because we've never been forced to. Right? So that's a message also. However you want to contextualize it religiously, not religiously, it's totally your place to figure that out. But the point is, your job, I think all of our jobs, you know, I tell people that we're mislabeled as teachers all the time. We shouldn't be called teachers. We should be called facilitators of learning. Because I could teach a great lesson, and it doesn't matter if you don't get anything out of it. Right? I've delivered everything. I've done all of my routines. I know research-wise that this type of workshop and this type of presentation is going to get the greatest outcome. But it flopped. So does it matter? The answer is it really doesn't. Right? I can cover all of my curriculum and still not have achieved the goal, which is why we for assess formatively and do all those things, to know that we're you know, meeting our target. At the same time, if we are facilitators of learning, whatever better term you can come up with, then really the focus is on the kids. It's kid-centric. It comes from the student's perspective. What do you need to succeed? And how can I really make this year the most for you? And the goal of school should not be to just coast through it. The goal of school should be to maximize the time. Now, nobody wants to work, quote unquote, extra. But if you view it again as not being a definitive, clearly defined amount that everybody has to meet, but it's a matter of a journey and an ongoing process, then hopefully they'll be more willing to hear that and more willing to accept it. And they'll say, you know, you're helping me for the longer. You kind of create the picture for them. Imagine what you're going to be able to do in life that maybe some other kids won't be able to do because of the foundation I'm giving you here. So you give them some type of real life connection, how this could be useful. And more and more today than ever before, kids want to know, how is this useful to me? How will this help me advance in my life? There's a lot of disillusionment in education because we're not doing a good enough job in selling the importance of what we're teaching. And that's why I think STEM and some of the other things are really taking front and center because they're coming back, they're sort of cycling back to what's really important in all of this and how do we make it real.